In this section, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. That's when we take a derivative of a function that's not necessarily solved for our independent variable. So if we look back at the equations we have so far taken a derivative of, um, the equations was always solved for uh, one variable, and that variable we could um, express as a function of our uh, independent variable. So in this case, y is our dependent variable, and x would be our independent variable, and we've taken the derivative of such a function. What we are going to look at next are equations uh, where um, our variables are not separated. So here's an example, x to the fourth plus y squared equals 5xy. Uh, these equations may be inconvenient to solve for our uh, dependent variable, in this case y, um, or sometimes not even possible. Um, so the way we're going to think about them is uh, think about y as a function of x. And as we take the derivative of uh, this function, we're going to make sure we apply the appropriate rules, chain rule, product rule, and the quotient rule. So let's consider an example. Uh, we want to differentiate with respect to x, um, which means x is going to be our uh, independent variable. And the function we're going to take a derivative of is x squared plus y squared equals 5xy. Right? So since we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we are going to think of y as being a function of x. And then go ahead and take the derivative. Um, the derivative of x to the fourth will take like we used to. It's going to be 4x cubed. When we take the derivative of f of x squared, we're going to make sure we follow the um, chain rule. Um, so if we have a function that's taken to the second power's derivative is going to be 2 times that function to the first power, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside of this um, set of brackets. On the other side of this equation, we do have to use the product rule. We have 5x multiplied by f of x, and that means I'm going to take a derivative of 5x, which is 5, multiplied by f of x, and then add the derivative of f of x, which is f prime of x times 5x. So this is what we're going to get, right? So 4x cubed, for x, they're, they're, that's the derivative of x to the fourth. 2f of x is the derivative of f of x squared times f prime of x. That's because of the chain rule. I got to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the other side of this equation, again, we applied the product rule. The derivative of 5x is 5 multiplied by f of x plus derivative of f of x, which is f prime of x, multiplied by 5x. Now, if we go put back what f of x and f prime of x are in the notation we started with, we really have 4x cubed plus 2y, y prime equals 5y plus 5x times y prime. Right, so this uh, second step we've had taken, or the, that replacing the y with f of x, helps us visualize our functions better, maybe unnecessary after we get used to uh, taking derivative of uh, additional variables, as long as we keep track of which ones are uh, independent variable, in this case x, and which ones are dependent variable, uh, in this case y. Uh, so last thing we're going to do to this equation is try to solve it for y prime. Now, that's not always possible. Uh, so sometimes we just leave our equation the way it is. In this case, it can be solved for y prime. Uh, bring the two terms that have a y prime uh, to the same side and move the 4x cubed to the other side. So all the y primes are together. Uh, so that gives me 2y y prime minus 5xy prime. So brought the 5xy prime to this side and subtracted the 4x cubed to the other side. Then we're going to factor the y prime out and divide by 2y minus 5x on both sides. And I get a, a, a an equation for the derivative of a y with respect to x. So dy dx or y prime is uh, the expression that we got. Okay, so let's look at one more example here. Uh, this one is uh, more of a uh, life science application. So Kermack-McKendrick model. 
uh, allows us to predict fraction of population that will be infected by a disease under different conditions. And here's what the model says. Um, the equation that we get is uh, Greek letter rho times e to the negative qa equals 1 minus a. And a in this case is the fraction of the population that's ultimately infected. Uh, Q is the measure of trans, uh, transmissibility of the virus, right? So some viruses are more transmissible. And rho is the measure of the fraction of the population that's initially susceptible to infection for underlying conditions, uh, or maybe they're not vaccinated. Um, so that's a constant um, as we start this problem. So our variables are Q and A, right? So the... Uh, fraction of population that's initially susceptible is a constant. Um, so uh, we want to know in this case the change of the outbreak size A, right? So how fast does the fraction of the population change based on the mutation in the pathogen uh, that increases its trans transmissibility Q, right? So as the virus becomes more transmissible, uh, how does that affect um, the change uh, of the outbreak? Uh, size, right? So we, in other words, uh, A uh, is considered to be a function of Q, right? So Q is our independent variable, and that will affect what fraction of the population um, has uh, this disease. Uh, so if we go back and rewrite this equation we were given, um, I can rewrite it as rho times e to the negative q times f of q, right? So a is a function of q equals 1 minus f of q. And then go ahead and take the derivative of this. Uh, in this case, uh, when we take a derivative of rho e to the negative q f of q, I do need to use the um, ch uh, chain rule. And uh, while taking the chain rule, I need to use the product rule uh, for the product in the, ex uh, in the exponent. Um, on the other side, it's a little easier. Derivative of 1 is 0, and derivative of f of q would just be f prime of q. Right? So this is what I'm going to have. Um, so the, again, derivative of e to something remains e to the same thing. Uh, but then the chain rule kicks in, which means i got to take a derivative of the exponent in here. And to do that, uh, once again, we're going to do the product rule. And derivative of negative q is negative 1, just negative, multiplied by f of q, right? So the product rule says derivative of the first times the second, this is what we have here, plus derivative of the second, so derivative of f of q is f prime of q, times the first, so times negative q. And on the other side, uh, we have the derivative of 1 minus f of q, that would be 0 minus f prime of q, or just negative f prime of q. Right, so now we have the derivative. Uh, the rest is trying to um, isolate uh, this equation for f prime of q, solve it for f prime of q. So there's two f prime of q's, one is stuck inside of this bracket. So first thing I'm going to do is distribute um, this uh, part that's outside the bracket in and move things around. So I'm going to, I've moved this um, negative f prime of q to the left side, and I have uh, moved this part that I get by distributing uh, rho e to negative q f q times negative f q um, to the opposite side. So that gives me a positive f q rho e to the negative q f q. That's these two things multiplied. And the result of this multiplication is sitting here, and I've brought f prime of q to the other side. Right, so that has both f prime of q's on the same side, allows me to uh, factor them, and then divide both sides by what's inside of this parentheses to isolate f prime of q. And so I have an expression now for f prime of q. Last thing I'll do is uh, put f of q and f prime of q. Um, so rewrite them back in terms of the variables uh, that we started with. So that means uh, dA dq is equal to 
um, a rho e to the negative q times a, and on the bottom I have a 1 minus rho q e to the negative qa.